my name is Brian Denny. I have the honor of being the Chief Administrative Officer at Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you all here tonight on behalf of TRCA, the staff and members, and also on behalf of the Greater Toronto Airports Authority, one of our primary sponsors of the great uh, PPG activity. Thank you all for coming to celebrate another successful year with us. I'd like to just acknowledge a couple of councillors who have taken the time to come tonight. Uh, Councillor Chris Fonseca from Mississauga, I think, is still with us. I know she was here earlier. There's Chris. And also John Sanderson from Brampton. John's over on the, on the far side here. We're expecting a few others, but I don't think any others have made it yet. Uh, but uh, thank you, Chris and uh, John, for taking the time to be with us tonight. I know that many of you in the room have close relationships already with Partners in Project Green, and we thank you for your ongoing dedication and support. It is you implementing projects on the ground, building sustainability into your organizations, and driving green innovation forward that make what we do possible. Our partners and ambassadors are the driving force behind Partners in Project Green. And we look forward to continuing to foster and develop those relationships and the results that they can achieve. There are also many of you in the room who are new to Partners in Project Green and we especially welcome you tonight and we encourage you to speak to your fellow business leaders and Partners in Project Green staff to learn how you can get in on the many opportunities available to you. Partners in Project Green was created with a vision, a vision to become a world-class region known for its competitive and high-performance eco-business climate. The work we have done in the last two years has seen us move forward to that vision and it is inspiring and it is gaining momentum. To share the results achieved in 2010 and the ongoing march towards the achievement of our founding vision, I'm pleased to introduce Toby Lennox. Toby is the Vice President of Corporate Affairs and Communications at the Greater Toronto Airport Authority, as well as the Chair of the Partners in Project Green Steering Committee. He keeps us on track. His leadership and support are integral to the success of this initiative, and I'd like you to join me in welcoming Toby Lennox. And thank you very much, Brian. Um, it certainly has been a pleasure to work with uh, Brian, his team, and with the rest of the uh, PPG Steering Committee over the past year, because really an awful lot has been done, a lot of work by the teams, a lot of work by the members of the Steering Committee and by the very committed staff to aid businesses in really trying to achieve sustainability goals. Um, there are many, many successes um, that we want to report on tonight. Um, but first, a comment that is really quite impressive, and that is that company participation in PPG, um, well, we've had almost 1,200 participants attending training events, our networking sessions and community tree plantings. Um, we've had 480 businesses engaged in PPG programs. I want to congratulate all of you um, on taking advantage of the resources that are made available because really the successes to date underscore the value of the sustainability work that we're doing, the value that ties sustainability to a bottom line, to a green bottom line. Now Partners in Project Green has some real target areas that we focus on. And I'm going to go through some statistics and bear with me, um, they will take some time but I really want you to pay attention to see the extent of the progress that is being made. Now these are also to be found in our annual report which you will find outside. So in the past year we've had 143 companies using PPG energy management training, 104 medium and large industrial commercial and 2,496 small industrial and commercial um, enterprises completed energy retrofit projects in 2010. 124 companies completed natural gas retrofit projects. And in total, and this is an impressive number, 
Companies in the, in the zone saved 2.99 megawatts of electricity and eight mil, over 8 million cubic meters of natural gas where we reduced CO2 emissions by some 18,000 tons. Six companies used the PPG Alliance for nine projects to reduce the cost of their building retrofits. This is particularly interesting in an area such as this where the building stock is now of a certain age uh, where this type of, a, type of successes come at a great deal of hard work but also mean an enormous amount for the companies involved. Renewable energy is another target area. A rooftop solar procurement group was formed with the goal of working together to uh, provide a source for rooftop solar solutions for participating companies. 21,652 megawatts of electricity in the Pearson Eco Business Zone was sourced from 100% Type 3 Eco Logo certified green energy in 2010. 108 participants were given expert knowledge and insights into rooftop solar through understanding the economic benefits of rooftop solar seminars. One area that is often somewhat ignored but incredibly important is the area of water conservation and water resource. And this is where we spend time working a lot with our municipal partners to try to achieve real progress. You can see the statistics on the work that we have done with the region of Peel, but also with very valuable assistance from the City of Toronto. Again, an often overlooked area um, for conservation, for sustainability, for companies within the Pearson Eco Industrial Zone. In transportation, there are 28 organizations in the zone that are using Smart Commute, which is an 87% increase over 2008 base year. And interestingly, the Sustainable Logistics Consortium was launched in 2010, and seven local logistics companies are working together on sustainable solutions for goods movement. This gives you an example of another area in which PPG is finding tremendous success, and that is working with consortiums of like-minded companies who are trying to pool their problems, pool their resources, and come up with solutions. What is interesting about it is these are often found, com companies participating in these consortiums are often those that are competing the most, including the hospitality industry in this area. Another area is natural heritage. One wouldn't think that in a significantly industrialized area such as this that you would see tremendous progress in this area, but we have. Restoration and naturalization efforts continue on five restoration sites and two new restoration plans are developed in 2010. 17 companies and 590 volunteers participated in community restoration activities in 2010, and I believe, Chris, you were just mentioning a tree planting which occurred during the pouring rain, at which we continued to have really good attendance. 1.88 hectares of restoration activity was undertaken in 2010, including 1,635 shrubs, 1,680 trees, and I hope that this number was audited, the 3,300 wildfires. <laughs> Um, I got a letter from Sheila Fraser. She thinks that's a little overstated, so we're going to have to go back to that one. Uh, five companies were engaged in the green parking lot program. On economic development, we have been working very closely with our municipalities, and it's tremendously important that we recognize that PPG is not possible without the support of the surrounding municipalities. We have worked on something called the Eco Business Zone Policy Toolkit, which is a series of toolkits for local municipalities to assist and encourage the types of policies that we need for sustainable development. And we want to thank very much the, the, communi the communities for the work that they've done. And to be quite honest, as a member of the steering committee, we thought this was going to be the hardest one to do to try to harmonize policies. In fact, it's proven to be one of the easiest tasks that we've undertaken. One that is tremendously exciting is the green jobs um, program that we've got. And this is where, when we're working with funding from especially Woodbine Entertainment, the City of Toronto, the Region of Peel, Enbridge Gas, we've developed several green job programs that is really trying to drive, to drive both employers and potential employees towards a career in sustainable technologies. 78 companies use PPG programming in this vein. And again, I spoke of the sustainability consortiums. These were created, four of them were created in 2010 for the purposes of working together, and I really commend those who have spent a great deal of time and effort in trying to find solutions through these consortiums. So just by way of conclusion of my remarks, as you can see, we have been very much at hard at work to try to reduce uh, the impact on the, on the environment, but at the same time having an impact on, uh, on the bottom line. 
I'm really looking forward to working uh, with both the new members of the steering committee, but also those who have been there with us from the beginning. But I think it's really important to recognize the tremendous effort that has been um, put out by TRCA and PPG staff. And in particular, Brian Denny, who just spoke, who's been the leader of this project ever since the start. Adele Freeman, who has been also right there um, always. Um, recognizing Chandra Charma, Chris Ricketts, Jennifer Taves, Dennis Braun, and Alex P. And I'm afraid, Alex, I'm just going to have to use your first initial because I'm afraid I can't get through your last name. Without the work that this crew has done, there would be no PPG. There wouldn't be a room for me to stand up to celebrate success. They really have been exemplary in their efforts, and we really commend them. And I would ask you just to give a huge round of applause for the work they've done. Now, there's also, there is so much good work going on in this area. And Partners in Project Green feels it's important to give credit where credit is due. And as such, we've developed the Partners in Project Green Awards Program. And Debbie Baxter is going to be, of Loyalty One, um, is going to join, join us to share the 2011 Sustainability Award Program. Now, Loyalty One, for those of you who may not be aware, it is a global provider of loyalty strategy, customer analytics, and relationship marketing. But what is fascinating is that it also plays an integral role in PPG. Debbie Baxter is their chief sustainability officer and responsibility for overseeing the Mississauga LEED Gold Building and the many other impressive sustainability initiatives that are happening over there. Loyalty One really is a true leader in the area of sustainability, a model of the, which we should all be looking to seek to emulate. And I'd like to ask you to join me in welcoming Debbie back to the stage. Thank you, Toby. It's certainly an honor to be announcing the 2011 Sustainability Awards. Um, our award uh, from last year brings us a tremendous amount of pride. It was a really exciting thing for our company to have won that recognition. And we're looking forward to 2014 uh, when we can apply again. So uh, <laughs> by then, you know, watch out award applicants in 2014 because we had some pretty exciting stuff happening and we plan to have much more. Uh, so some of the things that we're working on currently, uh, we have, uh, uh, Toby mentioned the existing lead building that we have, but we're working on lead for existing buildings at our Toronto downtown office, which is quite a, quite a challenge. I would say that's probably more challenging than uh, building a new building and, and incorporating lead into those standards. Working on our first digital public accountability report, so incorporating social media and videos and things like that into the delivery of that information, which makes it more of an engagement tool for staff and, and uh, partners that want to read about our, our programs and corporate social responsibility. We're also working on a bunch of innovative employee engagement programs, stuff that's um, pretty cool and we intend to share it through our public accountability report. And they're you know, easy things that anybody can adopt in their program. So contests and prizing and, and different strategies to get employees engaged in, in energy reduction initiatives and, and other uh, sustainable activities. Um, so uh, this year's award theme is uh, leadership in sustainability. And uh, considering the caliber of leaders in the Pearson Eco Business Zone, the race will certainly be a close one. And I uh, look forward to you participating in that process of, uh, of selecting those winners. Leadership and sustainability is being evaluated on three criteria, technology and practice, so testing or implementing cutting edge environmental technologies, behavior, integrating in, uh, sustainability deeply into operational practices, and the third area is around influence, so inspiring and encouraging employees and peers to action on the environment. One different component to this year's awards is that one award will be given out in each of the major business sectors in the area, so one for manufacturing, one for office, one for hospitality, and one for logistics. For more information or to download the award application, in case you want to apply, you probably want to go home and apply right now after this event, um, is uh, Partners in Project Green website and the Sustainability Awards section of that website. So good luck to you all, and I'm excited to see who will be following in our footsteps. Thank you. Unfortunately, a man who needs no introduction. Good evening, everybody. Um, 
My name is John Coyne, I'm with Unilever Canada, and uh, my job this evening is to speak about the achievement of the Green Power Challenge goal. And I'm here with Tom Heinzman, my partner <laughs> from Bullfrog. Um, but before I do that, I just want to echo a couple of comments that Toby made a moment ago, and that is to thank our friends at TRCA and PPG. Um, I did not know when Adele Freeman came down to see me one day two years ago in my office uh, that it would turn into this kind of enterprise. In fact, I completely confess, I really didn't understand exactly what it was that I was committing myself to when she said, would you come along and help with Toby Lennox, who I knew, to work this steering committee and work through something called Partners in Project Green. But I'm incredibly proud of the work that they have done, incredibly grateful for the guidance that they have shown us and the vision that they have helped us to develop even within our own company. Um, now, the Green Power Challenge that was introduced in April of last year is a collaboration between Partners in Project Green and Bullfrog Power, Canada's 100% green energy provider. The program challenges organizations within the Pearson Eco Business Zone to achieve a collective goal of greening 58,000 kilowatt hours of electricity by bullfrogging their facilities with 100% clean, green, renewable power. And I think I read that correctly. In April of 2011, just one year after that challenge was laid down for the businesses, I am really happy to be able to tell you that we have achieved that goal. And Unilever Canada, thank you. <laughs> Unilever Canada is very proud to have helped in the achievement of that goal. And since I have a few minutes, I'm able to tell you a little bit about Unilever for those of you who don't actually know the corporate brand, though you may know many of our products. Unilever is one of the largest consumer packaged goods companies in the world. We operate in virtually every nation of the world, and over two billion times a day, consumers reach for one of our brands. So sustainability for us is part of the DNA of what it is that we need to be about if we are going to be both a successful enterprise and one that is here for the long term. Our corporate strategy for the next number of years is to double the size of our business, but we're going to do that by cutting our environmental footprint in half. We have a firm belief that you can grow your business and decouple that growth from the environmental performance of your company. Unilever Canada announced earlier this year that we would green 90% of our business operations through purchasing Bullfrog Power Energy. That is a very substantial financial commitment for this business. It is a very substantial sustainability commitment for our business. And we're very proud to be partnered with Bullfrog to achieve that particular objective. I'm not up here to win an award. I'm here to share in the achievement of the goal this year. Like Debbie, I'm going to come back and apply for it, an award next year. Um, our goal is to enhance our sustainability credentials and to do so in a way that not only encourages our colleagues in the business community, but works appropriately with government officials, but most importantly, communicates that to our consumers. So the reach of our business to our consumers has to have a very strong sustainability message. So I want to thank PPG, I want to thank everybody who has contributed to the achievement of this goal, and we are now going to set a new goal. Tom Heinzman, please. Thanks, John. Uh, as, as you know, Bullfrog Power is Canada's 100% renewable energy provider. We put onto the electricity grid as much renewable energy as our customers use and then their money helps support new renewable power in Canada. Uh, we now have a new renewable natural gas product as well, so we now offer both heat and electricity. Um, I'd like to thank very much the partners in Project Green for their support and, uh, over the course of the last year, and particularly for meeting the goal of 58,000 megawatt hours. In particular, the, the, the companies are numerous in the sector that are, uh, that are bullfrog powered. Uh, but specifically Unilever, now when I reach for Basel or I reach for Hellman's or, uh, or my kids reach for the Ben & Jerry's, then I know that they've been made with, uh, with Bullfrog Power. And uh, Walmart, Loyalty One, and leading banks, BMO, RBC, TD Canada Trust are all participating in the challenge. 
along with over 30 other organizations in the sector. Due to the success of the program over the last year, uh, PPG is now raising the target to 100,000 megawatt hours, uh, and we're going to be striving for that over the course of the next year. Uh, very ambitious target, but certainly doable. Um, achieving this goal will help PPG uh, meet its target of sourcing 10% of its electricity, of the electricity in the uh, Pearson Eco Zone from renewable energy by 2015. So uh, we look forward to working with all of you in that regard. And John, thank you very much for Unilever's support. And uh, to Brian and the rest of the people at PPG, thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much, John and Tom, and my congratulations to everyone, particular congratulations to Unilever for their major commitment, but to everyone else who helped us to achieve that uh, very ambitious target. We look forward to celebrating the new target next year. My next task is a real privilege to introduce our keynote speaker tonight, um, Mr. Ernie Springelow, who is the head and senior country representative of Bayer Material Science for Bayer Inc. Now, if you don't learn anything else tonight, I'm going to give you a little tip that you'll be successful when you're dealing with international business people. Of course, in North America, buyer is generally known as bear. But I'm told from a good, reliable source that the proper pronunciation of this German company is buyer. But it's perfectly acceptable to pronounce it as bear in North America. Right? Now, buyer has been involved with Partners in Project Green since its inception, and it plays a valuable role on the steering, <coughs> excuse me, on the steering committee and on the executive team. Ernie is responsible for the sales and marketing activities for thermoplastic urethane, polyurethanes, coatings, adhesives and specialties, and polycarbonates. I think he's particularly passionate about polycarbonates and polycarbonate blends in Canada. Mr. Springlow's educational background includes a Bachelor of Applied Science in Chemical Engineering and Polymer Science from the University of Toronto. He has also attended the Executive Development Program at McGill University. He is a member of the Ordre des Ingenieurs du Québec and represents Bayer Inc. on Partners in Project Green. We're very fortunate to have Ernie with us tonight. He hosted our steering committee meeting this afternoon and gave a great tour of some of the things at the plant that I'm looking forward to hearing Ernie's remarks tonight. Please welcome Mr. Ernie Springlow. So good evening everybody. I just noticed that our theme, uh, my first slide says the Buyer Canada Sustainability Journey, yesterday, today and tomorrow. Um, for some of the people in the room who are of my generation, i.e. older, uh, they will recall that yesterday, today and tomorrow was a series of films starring a fellow named, a very dashing fellow named Marcello Mastroianni. Now, I can't say I share the dashing part, but <laughs> my name ends in a vowel as well. So that, sh <laughs> that should count for something. So, good evening, everybody. On behalf of Buyer Inc., I'm delighted to be able to speak to you this evening, uh, to all of you here at Partners in Project Green, uh, the annual general meeting. At the outset, let me congratulate the organization for organizing this event and for taking the lead to bring industry together on several occasions to discuss matters of sustainability. Each of these events, I think, has become an important part of the sustainability calendar in Toronto. As well, and uh, Brian has helped me here, as well, if uh, many, if not most of you, likely know Bayer, all together now, Bayer, a more than 140 years old company, uh, sorry, uh, uh, by our most recognized brand name, Aspirin. But we're much more than just Aspirin. Bayer, a more than 140 years old company, is made up of three businesses, healthcare, crop science, material science. 
material science is the best. I, yeah. <laughs> With global sales exceeding 32 billion euros in 2010, our mission statement is science for a better life in the sustainable businesses of innovative materials, nutrition, and healthcare. In my presentation, I'll try to touch upon some of our accomplishments over the last several years, our corporate sustainability framework, our future plans, and our strategies for success. I've been honored with 30 minutes of speaking time. I feel humbled by the opportunity presented, and I will try to save some of that time for questions. Now, when you go to a, a some sort of presentation seminar where they're teaching you how to do good presentations, they usually tell you what they're going to do, repeat it, and then summarize at the end. Well, I'm going to start by telling you what I'm not going to do. So, it isn't welcome to hell. I only have 1% of those slides, so six. The next thing I'm going to do, as well, I have a YouTube video which shows you what kinds of things the material science business is doing which contribute to sustainability south of the border and which illustrates why sustainability makes good business sense. So here you go. If technology works. When you think of Bayer, you probably think of aspirin, but maybe you should be thinking of Bayer Material Science and the energy-saving items they have in your home. The high-tech foam and car seats, it's the, the plastic that's in high-tech lighting, it's in the foam that's insulating our, our homes every day. Bayer's headquarters are right here in Pittsburgh, helping to put Pittsburgh on the cutting edge of new technology with research, development, and commercialization labs all right here. We find that the, the things that we're working on are really addressing some of the challenges of sustainability, the energy challenges, uh, even climate change. We're working on those right here every day in western Pennsylvania. Yet solar energy is just part of the high-tech explanation about how this building on the campus of Bayer works. The 800 square foot building uses no energy and gives off no emissions despite all the creature comforts of home. Everybody talks about going green, but to make it happen, that's a different situation. And that's what's frankly so exciting about this project, that it goes from being the brainchild of students at Penn State to now being a permanent building here on the Bayer campus. Dozens of materials from Bayer are part of the project, from foam insulation to LED lighting. The heart of the home's efficiency are these cylindrical solar tubes that collect light from all angles, even reflections from the roof. And thanks to the involvement of such bright young minds, this building will stand as a ray of hope for the future. And I would say material science is the bridge between chemistry and everyday life. One of the world's leading scientific corporations, Bayer, has a long tradition of support for a clean and sustainable environment. Bayer took another step in that direction when it made a decision to create the workspace of the future at its United States headquarters in Robinson Township. It is a $17 million renovation project, Bayer integrating many of the company's material science products in order to create this sustainable, environmentally friendly workspace. We're really looking at three goals. So we said, well, first of all, we have a commitment to sustainability. So consistent with that, let's really invest in some energy savings, some materials, and some technologies. Second, we truly wanted to create a workplace of the future for, for reasons that I can explain. And we also uh, wanted to highlight and showcase some of our products. Uh, we're known for some of the most energy saving products that one could ever use. Polyurethane foam is just one example. So these were three goals and, and we saw this as a $17 million investment that we could address all three of those. What Penn State, you have done is develop an innovative model for how to do research. Government pulled resources from across different agencies to support your effort. 
Private sectors are already pitching in to help. Uh, Bayer Material Science is providing materials for insulation and facades that save energy. The reputation for Bayer for innovation, that this is a company that's really committed to innovation. Innovation is in our DNA. So the sharp-eyed among you, well, the sharp-eared among you will have noticed that uh, even President Obama didn't get the memo about the pronunciation. <laughs> and the sharp-eyed among you will have seen that there's a fellow with a green shirt that bore a striking resemblance to our current Prime Minister. Well, it wasn't our current Prime Minister, but I think they share something else. I suspect they share something else. I think they're both Republicans. <laughs> So, editorializing aside, we'll go to the next slide. Now, we, uh, in the buyer network, in the buyer sustainability network, uh, we have an opportunity to share um, a lot of the work that's been done around the world, and that's one of the reasons why I showed you that. We'll touch on that near the end of the presentation because we've uh, taken, we are going to be taking one of the steps in 2011 and likely 2012 that has already been taken on the Pittsburgh campus. But more about that later. So, what we've done so far, we've set up, we have set up several environmental initiatives in Canada. For starters, we built, even before we were talking about sustainability, a green roof in October 2007. The roof is home to 10,000 square feet of plant life and on occasion some Canada geese and their goslings. Two sets at least that I've seen. <clears throat> that's, that's the first of its kind in the West Toronto industrial neighborhood. Our green roof has improved air quality by absorbing carbon dioxide and other airborne pollutants. By 2010 we completed two white roofs spanning a total of, and excuse me for this uh, because I should have said a thousand square meters rather than 10,000 square feet, so now I'll say 2,600 square meters that reduced our reliance on air conditioning and heating. Through these initiatives, further, we received um, Canadian dollars, 35,000 in uh, grants. Now for the rest of the Canadians that are left in the room with, a, with an inferiority complex, that's 36,050 U.S. dollars. <laughs> One of the main projects and goals of our sustainability program was to divert 78% of buyer head office waste from landfills. That's total waste from our head office site. We've accomplished this by introducing a detailed waste separation process, uh, process and by involving all of our employees. Our head office site is made up of some relatively old buildings, 20 and some even as old as 30 years, of which, which were once the manufacturing facilities. Another piece of trivia, we're on McCullough Avenue, it used to be the McCullough Chainsaw Factory, and uh, some people toured that this afternoon. Um, to green our workplace, we introduced a number of initiatives to reduce our energy consumption and waste overall. Sensor-controlled lighting, computer-controlled lighting and heating systems, Equipment upgrades like installing new staged boilers and moving to FSC certified paper have significantly reduced our energy use and waste. With a computerized system upgrade, we, we will be able to further engage our employees by showing them how energy consumption varies on monitors in virtually real time. Not only have these led to savings in dollars, but they have also created an organizational culture increasingly aware of the need for energy savings and waste reduction. In terms of our choice of company lease vehicles for field employees, we recently eliminated the six-cylinder engine option. We instead established a somewhat greener fleet with diesel and hy hybrid models offered which has lower CO2 emissions than previous exclusively gasoline-powered vehicles. For those employees who prefer spark ignition engines powered by gas, gasoline, smaller, more fuel-efficient engine and continuously variable transmission-equipped vehicles have been provided. 
In 2009, we started a new element of our program, Con Consumer Care Canada Sustainable Packaging Initiative. The goal of our consumer care business is to package all over-the-counter products in materials that still do their job, but with less impact on the environment. This has included contracting creative design firms that are 100% bullfrog-powered, replacing solvent-based varnishes with water-based varnishes on cartons, and using FSC-certified paper for over 95% of the marketing materials produced in Canada. In 2011, we decided to introduce, uh, with a colleague who was here, as a matter of fact, taking the lead, we decided to introduce something that we call our corporate sustainability uh, framework. Designed to be consistent with the sustainability approach at Buyer AG, the holding company that owns all the buyer companies in the world, we in Canada launched our network that clearly defines and groups all of our activities. You can see that it spans, it goes from business practices to philanthropy and community involvement. For each area, we have well-established initiatives that are managed like any other business. We have budgets, people responsible and accountable, timelines, and expected outcomes. A cross-functional sustainability council brings in or develops best practices and takes a leadership uh, role in driving initiatives throughout the organization. Each member of the council has been nominated by the Buyer Inc. leadership team. The council is in the process of developing an annual scorecard that sets out clear targets for various sustainability projects. For us, sustainability is embedded across our businesses and, across our bus and in our business strategies. For 2011, we're very proud of the following achievements. We have been selected as one of Canada's greenest employers for 2011 by MediaCorp, and this is the third year in a row. Buyer Sustainable, Buyer AG Sustainable Development Report was recently ranked among the best in the world. This report demonstrates how we create a balance between the economic, environmental, and social aspects of our global businesses. For our material science business, we use to truck products from our manufacturing sites in Texas and West Virginia directly to customer locations in Canada. For several years, we have used transloading sites in Canada, which has saved us freight costs and have also saved a lot of 25-year-old maple tree equivalents, over 22,000 in 2010 alone. Now, 36 of those trees are equal to a metric ton of CO2. And they've allowed, as well, a higher level of customer service with a lower net cost. For all of you in marketing, that's a lower net cost, not a lower net price. <laughs> <clears throat> not too many people in marketing, apparently. <laughs> um, we've installed in our, in our, um, uh, our outback area, uh, we had to replace uh, four wooden um, uh, power transmission poles. We've replaced these with what are known as our standard uh, power transmission units. These are modular composite poles made using bio raw materials and we've installed them in our outback backyard at our head office. These replaced treated wood poles at one third the installed weight and they will not rot nor will they leach chemicals into the soil. And the actual trees can stay in the ground and continue to absorb CO2. We uh, recently, very recently, less than a month ago, installed three test um, light standards that are powered by wind, a horizontal windmill rather than, uh, sorry, a vertical windmill rather than a horizontal one, which works at any wind speed or wind from any direction, um, and also has a solar panel. These poles have an estimated life of about 25 years. Uh, they're a little on the expensive side, but they're part of a program that we want to enter to and enter into, and which eventually will also use composite structures. We have a partnership with North Kipling Junior Middle School, um, close to our head office, just north on Kipling, as a matter of fact, oddly enough. 
Among the many activities that we do with our school, we invite students for a head office backyard planting activity. We have some planters that are made with, again, biomaterial science products, and but our 70% fly ash, and fly ash is a waste from cold fire uh, stations that generally goes into landfill. Um, these are now used to make these planters, and these planters are quite colorful and fit in with, uh, with the background quite well. We're going to, that is one of our truly uh, great examples, in my view, of sustainability, because we have the social aspect with the students, we have the environmental aspect uh, with the fact that we uh, don't throw the fly ash into landfill, and we have the economic aspect in that one of our we sell to one of our customers, and they can sell out into the marketplace. We have and we have enlisted uh, manpower, literally, for the following initiative, and that's waterless urinals. We have installed on a trial basis two uh, two of them. Uh, these are quite successful. They save 3.8 liters of water per flush, and we're going to install 10 more this year. With partners uh, in Project Green, uh, we've participated in a number of workshops. Thanks to PIPG, we recently had an intern from Seneca College uh, for eight months to work on our carbon footprint project. In addition, uh, I sit on the board of a, an organization called Green Center Canada, and we are also sponsors uh, in conjunction with our, um, our um, U.S. company. Green Center Canada is a national center of excellence for commercializing early stage green chemistry discoveries generated by academic researchers and industry. It's funded by the governments of Ontario and Canada and industry. Green Center Canada is dedicated to developing environmentally friendly alternatives to traditional chemical and manufacturing products and practices. If you're viewers of the Discovery Channel, you will have seen Dr. Jessup, uh, who talks about his reversible solvent for reclaiming polystyrene, <coughs> among other things. Some very, very exciting things are going on there, uh, there in Kingston, as a matter of fact. As a sponsor, we gain one-stop access to Canadian green chemistry discoveries and possibly there will be a Green Center USA, we're working on that. We have taken an active part in assessing these new technologies and providing development advice for promising discoveries uh, that are accepted into the Center for Commercialization. So what's next? Well, on June the 6th, uh, Bayer is a, is a long-standing partner uh, of the United Nations Environment Program at both a global and a local level. On Monday, June the 6th, UNEP, Bayer, and Evergreen Brickworks will host an award ceremony and news conference to announce the International Children's Painting Competition winners and present the student workshop. The workshop, Forest Matter, Matter to Youth 2, hard to say, will be led by U.S. astronaut and environmentalist uh, Dr. May Jemison and Canada's first female astronaut, Dr. Roberta Bondar, with 50 students from our partner school, North Kipling Junior Middle School. We have water and energy audits coming up in 2011. We plan to complete them this year. We've been a little tardy in getting those done. I'm an engineer by training, as you heard. I like numbers. I like to do measurements, and I know that if you don't measure it, it generally doesn't get done. So we're working on getting those completed. With the help of the Seneca um, intern, we will be uh, calculating at least phase one and phase two of our, of our footprint this year. We've instituted a program by which all new employees, uh, and yeah, all new employees will only get electronic or be able to get electronic pay stubs. And we're encouraging old employees like me, well, older in my case, um, employees to use electronic pay stubs so we can avoid mailing things out and using up paper for no real reason, because I'm not sure how many people really do read those stubs. Ours are practically unintelligible. <laughs> um, we plan to build uh, a sustainable building in our outback. Um, this will be a green retreat 
in our backyard. It will be self-sufficient in terms of energy. It will showcase materials that, uh, that buyer makes. The total estimated area will be somewhere around 100 square meters or 1,000 square feet for those of you metrically impaired. The space will be used as a meeting center for buyer employees. And the equipment retrofit in a building that's between 20 and 30 years old, with sections 30 years old, continues. So we'll continue to replace the drives when they fail, the boilers when they fail, with upgraded technology, technology that will save us, that not only does the right thing, but will actually save us some money. So what are our strategies for our, what we call our sustainability um, for success? Well, it demands, sustainability demands innovation. We're an inventor company. We set trends in research intensive areas. And research means progress and more sustainable businesses overall. In terms of our sustainability programs, we have ensured that we are innovative, or we have tried to be innovative in everything that we, that we do. We have our partnerships with local schools, community organizations, the Ontario Science Center, PIPG, each one of these has allowed us to learn and adopt new aspects of sustainability and have provided our employees opportunities to volunteer in interesting projects. It's been a, a collaborative way of learning and I think a very effective way. Buyer Employees has a workforce of approximately 800, we think, talented individuals. Our key strength, our human capital, has significantly contributed towards strengthening our sustainability agenda, employees' ideas and their passion drive our success. Of course, the cost savings through our many initiatives have enabled us to build our business case for green initiatives and gain leadership support. But as I like to stress, and as Gen Xers will tell you, you either get it or you don't. And the, our CEO, our leadership, seems to have gotten it, so it makes my job and our job collectively a heck of a lot easier when we propose these, uh, these new projects and, and these new things that we want to do. The fact that our Sustainability Council team represents employees from all business units and support areas shows that sustainability for us is embedded across the, New York, the organization and is a key component of all our business strategies. We have been able to leverage our green brand to attract some of the best and brightest talent from across Canada. Now that's a big surprise to me. I did not, I was a skeptic, you know, hard numbers, so-called hard-nosed business person. It's not that hard, actually, but um, I was a skeptic when I, uh, when, when I heard that that was going to be a talent uh, management or a, ta or a retention strategy or a strategy to, atta to attract new talent. But you know what? In our interviews, both our, our outgoing interviews, interviews with suppliers of services, including consultants, have shown us that our green brand is actually something that is an intangible but has tangible results in hiring uh, very uh, good people. This leadership as a corporate citizen continues to be one of the top five reasons why people want to work with us. In fact, it has been instrumental in our success as one of Canada's top 100 employers for the last four years. Our sustainability agenda is closely reviewed by senior management teams, so they're involved and they're supportive. This commitment and involvement is critical for the entire process to be successful. Their critical inputs have been useful for us to shape our sustainable vision and goals. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much for your attention. If you've got any questions. Um, I don't know that we had that difficult a time. And, and that was surprising. And I think part of the reason is um, I mean, the barrier is always the money when you're making the investments, okay? Now, the benefit that we had is we had a top-down push. We were a German company, a German-based company. They got green before we got green, 
Okay, so that was extremely helpful. You know, we've issued that sustainability report at least three times, I think, three or four times. And you can go to Bayer.com or Bayer.com for that matter and get, get our sustainability report. It's quite a thick, thick volume. Now, sustainability is important to us from a purely business sense. We will do very well. Bayer Material Science, specifically, will do and has done very well uh, acceding to requests for sustainable solutions. Okay? So, we didn't have a tremendously high hurdle because people already saw the benefit. I mean, it was our business kind of thing. So, for me, uh, probably the issue is steering people in the right direction because there's a lot of information and there's a lot of you know uh, people that have not have skipped chemistry you know if you watch uh, the big bang theory you ever watch the big bang theory sheldon sheldon is a physicist he knows everything he's not really right if you're a chemical engineer you know everything <laughs> <coughs> so 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 but, but you really need, and I'm, I'm all joking aside, we have a program in, in the U.S. called Making Science Make Sense, it, and it's led by uh, May Jemison, as a matter of fact. And we're, you know, our challenge really was to effectively communicate with people who are, and I don't want to be uncharitable here, but scientifically and mathematically less than literate. Okay, So when you start talking to someone like me and you start talking about sustainability, well, that's great, and I'm doing this because of this. Well, why exactly are you doing that? And you start, you know, there's a very good book out right now by a guy named Michael Berners-Lee. It's called How Bad Are Bananas? And what it does is it calculates the uh, carbon footprint of practically everything, including bananas. And by the way, bananas are pretty good, okay? But once you start thinking about those things, the challenge becomes even more difficult because you become confused. You can do, you generally don't have a choice, you have a choice that's better than another choice. And so then it's, in, it's entirely up to you. Now, if you're waiting for somebody, if you're of the soundbite generation and waiting for somebody to give you the soundbite that says go in this direction or that direction, then you've got a problem because there isn't somebody that's going to be able to give you the solution. So that's the challenge. The challenge is to make the right decision based on sound science because we are talking about science here. We have a couple of initiatives. One of them you may have heard about, and we're working with a university in, I think it's Aachen, Germany, uh, on the development of um, uh, catalysis that will take CO2 and turn it into the products, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and turn it into the plastic products that we, the plastic raw materials that we make. Now, when you, when you say, okay, it's petrol, uh, you know, it's based on oil. Well, when you actually take 100 kilograms of oil, seven of those kilograms go into uh, chemicals, okay? Somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 50 to 60 go into gasolines and lubricating oils, and the rest go into heavy oils like Bunker C or the stuff that we drive on, asphalt, okay? Now, from a total value perspective, that seven kilograms has a multiplier that can be as high as 15. Okay, so I take, I take one kilogram of this, or it, it costs me a dollar. By the time I turn it into the other thing, it's really $15. Okay, and then when you run the, the total carbon uh, CO2 footprint, and let's, I'm just going to talk about CO2 because there are other things that we can talk about, chemicals. But on the CO2 aspect of it, you may actually, on a life cycle basis, for example, for insulating polyurethane foams, that's been recognized as the most effective and the least energy consuming and CO2 emitting uh, solution to uh, global uh, climate change. Okay. Now, I'm not sure, did I answer all that? Sorry. Okay. 
well, let me try and answer some more. We okay? Because I. That'll depend on that uh, on that uh, um, uh, catalysis work, because if that catalysis works, we'll be able to replace up to a hundred percent in certain products. Well, there's something out there that's already catalyzing that carbon dioxide. It's called photosynthesis. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're we're familiar with the photosynthesis process. The problem is, <laughs> photosynthesis has a doesn't quite make some of these other valuable products. But yeah, I mean, if we could find if we could if we could take the chlorophyll and the light, we could do a whole bunch of things. And uh, the catalysis is really trying to do some of that, but it's trying to do it with the CO2 alone. Okay, the easier question. <laughs> and my colleague, when we sit uh, at our meetings and people come up with ideas, what, are we, what should we do, what shouldn't we do? We're relying on what other people have said, okay, somewhat. But we're trying to steer, um, uh, or I'm trying to steer people towards solutions that at least make sense to me from a life cycle analysis and, and things like that. You're right, we do have somewhat of a cart before the horse when it comes to that. But in, 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 the case, in, in this case, I think doing something like a green roof where photosynthesis is in action, uh, or a white roof where we're reflecting sunlight so that the uh, input air to our air conditioners is 20 to 30 degrees cooler than it normally would be, I think we can go ahead with those things and we're lucky enough that somebody isn't standing behind me and saying, okay, you spent $350,000 for that. How long is it going to take me to uh, get that money back? Now, we have, we have a one slightly, uh, one other advantage. The other advantage is we have an old building. We're going to have to replace it anyway. So now what we're doing is we're taking a best guess and we think we're in the right direction. So directionally, we're going, uh, we're, we're going where we want to go. Do we have the numbers? No. And that's why, what we're trying to get now, so that all future investments will be that much more effective. Okay. Ernie, if I may, just on behalf of everyone here tonight, I'd like to thank First of all, Bear, for making you available to PPG and uh, for having you here tonight. We really appreciate you showing us the experience and giving us a bit of a glimpse of what's ahead mm -hmm. at Bear. And, and I just wanted to comment that I think what we hear tonight from Ernie is really the essence of what PPG is all about. Green business can be really good business. A lot of it um, about creating the sustainable products that we need for the future is based on research that is taking place here in Canada and for the sake of humans on this planet we need to get a lot better at developing those kinds of processes and products and we really appreciate your leadership in helping us to get there so thank you very much. Thank you very much. I do have a, I do have a small token here for you Ernie and, and given that our key sponsors are from Greater Toronto Airports Authority and from Unilever, I can only assume that in that bag could be some combination of first class tickets, maybe to Windsor or Thunder Bay, and probably some Dove for Men. That's so, exactly what I Thank needed. You. Thank you very much. So just as we wrap up tonight, I wanted to extend our thanks to Trevor Louie and the staff here at the International Centre. Trevor, are you? Yep, Trevor is at the back. Thank you very much. Great facility, and I know you're doing a lot to green this operation. If you get a chance to talk to Trevor, he can tell you a lot about what's going on here, everything including the use of local food, which we commend him on um, considerably. Thank you, Trevor. And I, I couldn't really conclude without um, a little more thanks to uh, our friends from the Airport Authority and from Unilever. Toby and John have been 
wonderful partners in this enterprise. You know, I'm from the government. I'm good at spending other people's money. They're, uh, they're really hard-headed, hard-nosed businessmen who have continuously reminded us that this is a startup enterprise and we really need to take a business approach to it and I really appreciate the leadership and commitment that they personally and their companies have given to this. It really is adding immensely to our success. So please uh, thank me, or join me in thanking Toby and John. Now we really want you to enjoy the rest of the evening, the food and the fellowship, but just a couple of announcements here. If you get a chance, please speak to the BOMA representatives that are here. BOMA has some really interesting programs on energy efficiency. Uh, Tr Toronto Hydro here is here as well. And I just received tonight um, a notice for this major event in Toronto, VX 2011, which is June 5th and 6th in Toronto. There are flyers here. And Paul Mertes is here somewhere. Paul's in the front. He can tell you a little bit more about that program. It sounds like something that's very much in line with the objectives of PPG. So thank you all very much for being here. I hope you enjoy the balance of the evening and continued participation and success in Partners in Project Green. Thank you.